So this is a quick video tutorial on how to tackle data station questions. So you can get different types of data ranging from line graphs to bar charts all the way to pie charts. You need to make sure that you understand the title of the graph and also the different axes. And then also you need to make sure that you're describing what you can see and then explaining why these trends are occurring potentially. They sometimes might ask you follow-up questions. For example, if a graph is uh, talking about cancer, then they might ask you a question about why cancer rates are particularly increasing or what you've noticed about cancer patients maybe during your work experience. So we'll jump straight into an example, but before we do that, I'm just gonna give you some quick tips and tricks for this question. So first of all, for graph stations, understand what this graph is and the purpose of this graph. You need to understand what the title of a graph means and what the trend even means as well. So one of the things that students really struggle with is they see a graph in front of them and they don't actually understand the purpose of a graph. So the first thing I want you to do is find the purpose of this graph. Next, try to draw some immediate conclusions. Is there a very uh, obvious upward or downward trend? Or can you see trends within a trend? So for example, there might be a sudden decrease somewhere before there was an increase. Sometimes you might even get multiple graphs. So just go through each graph one by one and then perhaps draw an overall conclusion as to what all the graphs are saying. Depending on which university you have your interview at, you may need to use your pen and pencil. So I would advise using your pen to maybe make some annotations on the graph you can see. And if the interview is an online interview, then again, it will work very much the same. They'll share their, the data or the graph uh, in, on the screen. So let's jump into a station. I want you to have a go at this question. Um, describe what this graph shows. So I've got this graph up in front of me and I'm going, going to go through it with you step by step. First of all, take some time to read the data, even if it's 20, 30 seconds, or even up to a minute. Observe what you're looking at um, and just identify the title and the axes just for context. One thing I would say is just first of all, introduce the graph that you can see in front of you. So I can see that this is first of all a line graph. It's showing that link between vaccine coverage for measles vaccines um, compared to the number of measles cases. Now, it represents the whole world, and also it covers a 35 year period from 1980 to 2015. So maybe that's a nice way to introduce the start of your answer. The next thing to do is to actually describe the graph. So you need to make sure that you're referencing numbers. So I can see here that as the vac vaccination coverage increases, um, measles cases um, kind of dramatically drop from over 800 per million at 20% coverage to less than 50 per million um, at 80% coverage. The biggest rise in vaccination uptake was between roughly 1980 to 1990. The next thing to do is to explain what the graph means. But again, be careful. Is the interviewer asking you to first of all just describe the graph or are they asking you to describe and explain the graph? So if I was going to explain this graph, I mean, I can see here that the graph suggests that the measles vaccine is, well, very effective in reducing the number of cases of measles. Um, although, you know, there could be other factors involved here, there, see, there does seem to be a very strong correlation um, suggesting that an increased uptake of, of the measles vaccine is resp responsible for a fall in cases. So sometimes you have to be a bit careful about making conclusions straight away. Um, sometimes you might need to infer information from the graph. For example, this graph here, we can see that it is over a 35 year time period. However, they might show you something that is over maybe a two or three year time period. So when you're inferring information and drawing conclusions, just take it with a bit, a pinch of salt and just explain to the examiner that you might need a bit more information to make more uh, kind of adequate conclusions. Remember that correlation doesn't always mean causation. For example, over a 20 year period, the consumption of alcohol might have increased, but at the same time, measles cases might have decreased. So again, you can't draw specific conclusions from a correlation. So explain that to the interviewer and tell them that you need to identify other factors as well. So there we have it. That's a systematic way to approach graph questions. Remember, keep it very simple at the beginning, then maybe describe trends that are quite unique to yourself. So maybe think about a point that someone else might not give. Um, and then at the end, draw, uh, a, draw and come to a good conclusion that just summarizes the data um, and just tell the interviewer why this data might potentially be important as well. Thanks for watching this video. Click below to subscribe and catch more of our videos.
To watch our full online course and find out how you can enrol onto our award-winning programme with personalised one-to-one tutoring, online weekly webinars and more, click here.